If you've ever seen the Disney movie Frozen, and I think there are some people in here who have, you will remember the scene where Princess Anna is sleeping and someone comes to wake her up. She is all groggy, hair's all messed up, drools coming out of the corner of her mouth. Her brain is having trouble turning on. Things are not clicking. This could easily describe some of you before you've had your morning coffee or other caffeine jumpstart. There is that moment when Princess Anna's brain fully connects to the words being shouted at her through the door. It's coronation day. Wake up. It's coronation day. When this happens, when her mind connects, she comes alive. She springs out of bed, and with uncontrollable joy, she runs around telling everyone that it's coronation day. She's so excited. This is the day she had been waiting for. She has no idea what is in store for her. She has no idea how hard it will be for her sister Elsa as she figures out what it means to live into her calling and into her authentic self. But Anna knows things are going to change and it was exciting to see what adventures would come next. This is the way I feel today. It's baptism day! It's baptism day! Today, through the spirit of adoption, we, as a community, will welcome a new member of the body, into the body of Christ, that sacred, royal body that calls us into something new and different. A call into a relationship with God's never-ending, unconditional love, and a call down a path to finding our own authentic selves with Christ within us. It's baptism day. It's baptism day. Today we baptize Benjamin. And the we part of the we will baptize Benjamin, it's not just me, the priest. It's also Chris and Jeffrey, Benjamin's parents. It is also Rocky, Philip, Nicholas, and Joshua, Benjamin's godparents. And it includes Bradley, Benjamin's brother. Yeah, you're here too, aren't you, Bradley? You don't remember when we gathered for you, but we did. The we does not end with those who have come special together. It's also all of the we. It's all of us who play a role in baptism. We all play a role into this adoption. Paul's letter of the Galatians reminds us that in Christ we are in this life together. See, baptis baptisms are not private ceremonies, but they're communal celebrations to remind us of who we are called to be, having been born in God's image. The gospel today gives us some guidance as to who and what we are called to be. Seminary professor and author Amy Oden points this out for us when she says, Jesus sends out 70 disciples with a proclamation that sounds deceptively simple. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. This word of peace is the first word, the opening word, the announcing word. Jesus assumes that these apostles that he sends do in fact have peace. Jesus says that your peace, specifically, not just random generic peace, will rest on others or it will return to you. She continues, 
And she tells us as we engage others, we must first be well grounded in God's peace. The peace that passes understanding. God's shalom is more than being calm. It is confidence in God's abiding presence so that we also share that presence with others. Engaging others means not treating them as objects upon which we act, but as sacred others with whom we are called to be fully and peacefully present. Did you notice in the gospel that Jesus did not set any prerequisites as to who the 70 were supposed to offer their peace? Nope. Just pick someone and offer your peace. Offer God's love. Offer to those that are like you and to those that are not like you. If they don't accept it, no worries. Let it go. Let it go. There's no fighting, arguing, forcible convincing or threats in the peace that passes all understanding. Offer it. And if, if it is not wanted or accepted, then that peace will return to you. For those that welcome you, say to them, and stay with them. For those that welcome you, stay with them. Get to know them in order for you to know what healing they might need. Build relationships. And then say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet, know this. The kingdom of God has come near. Did you catch that? Don't let the negative stick to you. Publicly wipe it off and don't carry it with you to the next town or to the next person. But before you go, let even the person who didn't welcome you know that the kingdom of God has come to them. The kingdom of God coming near is not dependent on anyone's response or belief. The kingdom of God is near. Offer your peace. Live into God's peace and go forth. God knows that being his follower is hard. Jesus knows that we are but lambs in the midst of wolves. This is, this is why we baptize in community. When we go beyond the walls and live into our baptismal covenant, we need to know that we are not alone. As we gather to baptize Benjamin, we are called to model for him our peace so that he will know how to share his. We are to model for Benjamin what it looks like to be an example of the good news of Christ. Th this is our peace. We are to model for Benjamin how to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves. This is our peace. We are to model for Benjamin what striving for justice looks like. And that when we proclaim we want peace among all people, this actually does mean all people. And as a people of God, we are to model for Benjamin what it means to respect the dignity of every human being. This is our peace. We are to model for Benjamin that when we fall short, when we don't quite live into who we are called to be, we are to, without fear, say that we're sorry and fix what we have damaged to the best that we can. This is our peace. It's baptismal day. It's baptismal day. Let's do this courageous and holy thing together. I invite 